Ash Framework can make managing database changes much easier with its built-in migration generator. Let's see how it works. Here we have a simple resource in a brand new project that has a Postgres table and repo configured as well as a primary key and a single attribute. So step one here is going to be to generate migrations. So to do that, we will use mix ash postgres .generate migrations, and we'll give it a name. We'll call it create posts. We run this command and we'll see some output about what it is creating. And we'll see that we got a new Ecto migration. So if we click through here, you can see we got a uh, create table blog post with adding the primary key ID and the text attribute. So now we can take a look and see what happens when we make some changes. For example, let's add a title. If we were to go in here and run our migration generator again, what we'll see is we're going to get just a migration to make the change uh, that we made. So if we click in here, you see we get alter table blog posts and we add the title. Next, we can take a look at foreign key generation. So if you have a belongs to relationship in a resource that will get generated as a foreign key. So if I rerun the migration generator with this new uh, comments resource, then we can see that it will generate a foreign key from the comments table to the blogs table. So let's take a look. You can see we created a table blog comments and we added the ID in the text, but we also have added post ID which references blog posts with uh, the sort of standard configuration that you'd expect here. The migration generator is also very configurable. We'll show an example of that here with this belongs to relationship where if a blog post is deleted, we want to delete all of the comments as well. So we can configure that with the references block and we can say uh, reference and then we'll call this post and then we'll say on delete, delete. So with that, when we generate migrations again, And you'll see something interesting here. One of the ways that the migration generator is helpful is that if you want to do this with Ecto migrations, you actually have to drop the constraint before you modify it, because this modify call here is going to create a foreign key. It's not going to actually alter the uh, foreign key. So the migration generator can help you figure out some of these more sort of complicated aspects of migrations. But here we can see now that this says on delete, delete all, which means that when I, we delete a blog post, we will also delete all of its comments. Next, we can take a look at check constraints. To show you this, let's go ahead and add an integer attribute. And so let's say we had this in, this attribute points and we wanted to make sure that it was always positive. There's a couple of different ways we could do that. We could add constraints. We can say that the min value is one. Uh, we could also add a resource validation and we could say validate compare points that is greater than zero. And so this is this is one way that you can do it. But let's say you want this to happen in the database because these these both of these methods will only be happening in the application logic. So what we can do is we can actually use the check constraints configuration here and we'll add a check constraint for points and we'll call it uh, points must be positive. And then we'll go ahead and say the check is points is greater than zero and we'll give it a message as well. We'll say points must be positive. So to learn more about check constraints, you'll want to read the uh, Postgres documentation for check constraints. But this is a tool that allows you to have those uh, generated for you. So now I can say generate migrations. And we'll say something like add positive only points. So it'll compile those files, generate our migrations. If we look at the generated migration, we'll see that we add points to the blog post table, and then we create the check constraint that points must be greater than zero. And you'll notice the message isn't in here. That's handled in the application side when we try to create or update something and we get back an error for this constraint. To wrap up, let's take a look at how the migration generator handles identities. So identities are sets of fields that uniquely identify an instance of a resource. And so these can actually be added to Postgres as unique constraints. So let's take a look. We'll add an identity here. We'll add one called, let's say, unique title. Let's say blog posts all have to have a unique title. Um, and we give it this field. It could be multiple fields, but we're just going to use one. Now, if we generate migrations, so add unique title. 
we should see that we will generate a uh, unique constraint for the title attribute here on blog posts. And that will ensure at the data layer that our resource is unique on title. One of the big benefits of this pattern is that you actually end up putting the sort of structure of your uh, database alongside your resource. And what happens often in applications where you're working with a lot of migrations is that to figure out what your database actually looks like, you either need to go to a database that has been migrated up to the point that you want to know, and then you need to look at the structure, or you have to backtrack through a whole bunch of migrations to figure out, well, what actually does my, re what does my table under the hood actually look like? So using this, you get a, a one place to find that information and it gets generated into migration separately as an implementation detail. So this can be very useful. As always, this is just a primer, so I wasn't able to cover everything. There's a lot of other things like custom statements and custom indexes that you can use with the migration generator. But I do hope that this was a good introduction to a tool that can help you develop more quickly and avoid hiding a bunch of code in your migrations.